Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&A. So let's go ahead and knock this out. All right, first question. If someone can't do a pull-up, what would their row need to be at relative to their weight for them to start doing pull-ups, bodyweight rows for reps? Uh, no, it's not even close. I mean, there there is no ratio. There's absolutely no ratio. But, um, I mean, realistically... If you can row your body weight for reps, there's there's no way you can't do a pull-up. There's no way you can't do a pull-up. Uh, like, for example, you guys have watched me do sets of 10 with 25 pounds on chin-ups, right? You've watched me do sets of 10 on chin-ups and pull-ups. But you've seen me barbell row 285 for work sets, like on a bent-over row. You've watched me do, I think, 255 for sets of 10 on the pen leg row. So, I, I mean, comparatively speaking, I'm doing this weighing 220, right? I row, whether it's a strict row or, you know, like a pen lay row or a bent over row, I still row more than my total weighted pull-ups and chin-ups. You should be able to move more weight, right? I know guys who barbell row 405 for reps. They can't do a 200 pound weighted chin up from a, from a full range of motion so you shouldn't even need to be that that strong you just need to get stronger you need to get stronger and, and quite frankly it shouldn't take that long for someone to get strong enough to do a chin up or a pull up uh and there's options there work on rows work on deadlifts and some people say how are deadlifts going to carry over to pull-ups because you're pulling heavy weight it will carry over work on those things and then start doing band assisted pull-ups and it won't take long before you can do pull-ups unless you're very 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 overweight right but in which case you need to lose weight but even then a person can still be 50 pounds overweight if they're strong and they have a lot of muscle they can still do a pull-up if they put enough muscle in their back and in their biceps and everything right totally doable but you're not going to find find an exact ratio. But but again, if you can row your body weight for reps, honestly, that's probably stronger than you need to be to be able to do a pull up or a chin up. It's quite a bit stronger. Like the threshold, the bar is lower than that. All right. Next question for DE, which stands for dynamic effort. Uh, when would you switch someone to 30% band and chain and how much bar weight would be used in each for the three week waves? I actually usually don't take squats and deadlifts to 30%. I take them to 25% for most of my clients. Um, as far as the benching goes, uh, I'll take guys to a, a 30% band or chain as soon as they've got a decent bench. Like once they're outside of, of like early intermediate bench, I don't mind taking them up to 30%. Uh, you know, what do I mean by that? I don't know. They can bench 270, 275. Definitely, if they can bench 300, I'll take them over to 30%. Now, how much bar weight? I used to run heavier bar weights. I have gone over to more of winning sort of math, Matt Winning's math for the speed work. And the reason for it is because the way that he breaks it down as to why he runs the lighter weights really makes a lot of sense to me from a programming perspective. It's not just about the bar speed. Yeah, we could argue that it is about the bar speed. We could argue that it is, and there is some degree of truth to that. However, the reason I agree with him is not necessarily that, right? It's not that. It's the recovery versus the stimulus side. And for me, as a, as a coach who programs for a lot of lifters, um, I mean, I'm running 26, 27 clients right now. That's normal. I, I will probably be at 30 at some point this year the vast majority of them are unconjugate. I'm used to looking at the recovery curves, and I think in terms of, of recovery, not just stimulus. And the way that he breaks that down is that you recover from it and it doesn't impede your max effort days. But you still get the same training response because if you just move the weight faster, we get the same training stimulus that we want from the speed work, even if it's slightly heavier. But it doesn't impede recovery as much. And, you know, Winning has stated that, and a lot of people listening are like, oh, that's nonsense. Look, I've tried it. I've tried it with my own clients, 
he is absolutely right. You can disagree with the man all you want. You can say, well, you know, whatever, if he coaches all these guys and coaches a 300 Ranger team and all these people and breaks these world records, you know, but that doesn't mean anything. You can say that. I've tried it. And he is right. And I, you have to give credit where credit is due. When another coach says something like that and you go try it with your lifters and the shit works, it made sense to me already, so I had to go try it. And it works. It absolutely works. So I run lighter percentages now, probably around 30%. Some of my guys will go heavier. We might go up to 40%. I run a lot of my lifters at 30% plus 25% band or chain on squats and deadlifts and then 30% band or chain on benching. And I've had a lot of luck with it lately. In the, in the last month or two, um, I've pretty much switched almost all of my lifters of that sort of setup who run accommodating resistance. And to, to be honest, I've been very pleased with the results overall. I've noticed the, the amount of overuse goes down, the amount of deloads we need goes down. Um, it, it works very, very well. So that's more or less what I would recommend. All right, next question and last question of the week. What's your thoughts on using Zercher squats if you don't have access to a belt squat machine for supplemental work? Okay, when you think about this question, it's utterly ridiculous. People say, well, why, why is it ridiculous? Uh, that's like saying, I, I don't know, let's two, take two somewhat comparable lifts. Would you do a behind the neck push press as a supplemental lift if you don't have access to a bench to do bench work or close grip benching? Do you see how silly this people are like, mm, there's some of the same muscles are used, but a behind the neck push press uses like completely different muscles and focus than a close grip bench or a, or a, a wide or a illegal wide bench or whatever, right? These are not comparable lifts in any remote possibility. The Zercher squat sucks as a lower body exercise. And I do mean that. Guys are like, it works the legs. Yeah, okay, fine, it works the legs. But if we're going to use that logic, then a good morning is a quad exercise. You say, no, it's not. It barely uses the quads, right? Zercher squat is not a lower body exercise. It's an upper back exercise. Okay, it has other benefits for grapplers. It can be very sport specific. It is not a leg exercise. It puts an incredible amount of stress on your back. It puts an incredible amount of stress on the low back. A belt squat machine puts your back into traction so that you use absolutely zero back. None. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. One of these is a back dominant squat that uses almost more back than it does leg. The other is completely 100% lower body and uses zero back. They're not even comparable. So if you looked at your programming and said, man, a belt squat would be really useful, a Zercher squat would be literally the worst, absolutely worst possible leg accessory you could possibly come up with in that slot. You couldn't find anything worse. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a single exercise that would be a shittier exercise in this slot. It's an upper back exercise that happens to use some legs. No, if you don't have a belt squat, do a leg press. Do a straddle lift. Do single leg exercises if you need those. A Zercher squat doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense at all in this, in this slot. It's an upper back exercise. And I know some good coaches who don't even like it for that. They think that outside of for fighters and grapplers, it's a completely useless exercise. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. But I've heard Paul Carter say that. He's like, you're basically a trash dumpster fuck coach if you prescribe it for anyone else. That's his opinion. And he's a pretty big name. So just throwing that out there. Uh, but but no, that they're they're not interchangeable. This means that you don't know what muscles are being worked. You have no idea what muscles are being worked in an exercise. Um, if this is your level of knowledge, then you, you're, you're going to need to hire a coach to write your programming for you. 
uh, anyone who's thinking in these terms, you're just not qualified to write your own programming. You need to you need to dish and hire a coach. If you don't know that the Zercher squat's an upper back exercise, and the belt squat is a completely low, lower body exercise, and that's we're getting bad. But it is what it is. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.